first of all, um, just like to really thank our staff uh, for a great job this past year. Uh, appreciate our staff through the transition. You know, we lost three of our coaches. They just did a wonderful job, a, a very hardworking, um, loyal staff. You know, just this morning they've got me on the phone with uh, close to 50 juniors. So, you know, they're a hardworking group. You know, the, the future's bright as far as recruiting goes. You know, just a couple highlights from this class that stood out to me. Our defensive line uh, class, I really believe, is the, the best in the country. I really believe we're building the foundation, uh, you know, for a top 10 defense. So I'm really excited about that. Coach Garner did a wonderful job with that group and uh, really deserves a lot of credit for a whole defensive uh, uh, class. You're talking about a guy that we lost three defensive, uh, you know, coaches uh, about a month or so ago. He really held that thing together and deserves a lot of credit for our defensive class. Also, our wide receiver class, I think, is the top in the country. And it's guys that we went after over a year ago. And we handpicked. That's who we wanted, and we got them. Coach Craig and the offensive staff deserves a lot of credit. Did a wonderful job, um, you know, with that group. I thought it was big that we signed the number one player in the state of Georgia. I think it's the first time in school history we did that. And uh, Georgia is very important to our success. Almost half our players are from the state of Georgia. And that will give us great momentum for the future with that. We also signed what we believe is the, the top player in the state of uh, Alabama, Marlon Davison, a guy that we identified well over a year ago, almost two years ago, uh, that we believe is the impact player. Florida is the third state that we really hang our hat on, and Nate Craig is a guy that we identified as the top guy in that state you know, over two years ago. And so we feel very good about going after the guys that we you know, targeted um, you know, a long time ago and uh, we're excited about that. I'm going to go ahead and briefly talk just a little bit about each one of the guys that, uh, that, that signed with us. First of all, the, the nine early enrollees, John Broussard, you know, from Phoenix City, uh, a corner. Uh, we've recruited him a long time. We really think he's got the ability to come in and give us some depth, you know, right off the bat. I already talked about Marlon. Uh, we think he's an impact player. Uh, he's a big athletic guy that can run, and uh, we feel very good about him. Kyle Davis. Kyle Davis, uh, you know, is a big uh, receiver. We really put an emphasis on this class on big guys uh, that could run, that could do some things with the ball, you know, after, uh, after they catch it. We think he's got a chance to be a phenomenal player. John Franklin, um, is, is, uh, he's got great speed. We think he throws the ball well. Uh, he's familiar with our offense, so we're definitely excited about uh, what he can do. Antoine Jackson, defensive line. We felt like he's one of the best defensive linemen uh, in the country. Uh, you know, Coach Garner recruited him extremely hard. It's been well over a year, almost two years that we recruited him. We think he's got a, a bright future and he's a fine young man. Paul James, we needed some pass rushers. We really feel like he feels the need. Uh, he stayed loyal to us through the transition. All right, we lost the coaches. There was about a week or so that you know, other coaches came after him. He hung in there with us, and we really appreciate that. Malik Miller, running back, a guy that we recruited for almost three years. Um, this guy's a true football player. You know, he's got good, very good running skills. Uh, he catches the ball well. You know, he protects. He does everything that we look for uh, in a running back. Landon Rice, tight end. Uh, this is a guy that's been committed to us well over a year, almost two years. This is a guy that's been extremely loyal to us. I mean, one of the top tight ends in the entire country. Didn't take any other visits. He helped us recruit. And, and just a very loyal young man that we're excited about. We think he can really help us next year. Trey Threet's a linebacker from uh, Spanish Ford. I believe he's the only linebacker in this class. He's got the unique ability where he can play inside or out. So he's going to give Coach Steele and Coach Williams some flexibility. And, and he's a talented young man. Broderius Ham, uh, offensive lineman. I believe we only signed two. He has the ability to play inside or play tackle. He's a big athletic guy, a very smart guy. And uh, so we're excited about coaching uh, big uh, Broderius. Woody Baird, our quarterback, started re recruiting uh, Woody uh, right when, when I got the head job here. Uh, Coach Lassie did a great job with him. We handpicked him uh, that, that he is a true dual threat quarterback. He can run it. He can throw it. He's got that leadership ability. And we really appreciate his loyalty, too. A lot of big schools uh, came after him. And uh, he hung in there and was very loyal to us and really helped uh, keep this class, especially offensively, together. 
Uh, Eli Stove is a guy that uh, we've been recruiting for uh, you know almost two years. I've got a wonderful family. Uh, we really feel like uh, he's got a very unique uh, 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 skill set. Uh, we think he's got a chance to be an impact player. He can really do some things with the ball. Uh, once once he gets the ball in his hands, we think he's going to do a great job for us and have a chance to help us next year. Nick Cole on the defensive line. I think he's state champion wrestler. A uh, couple years, he has a chance this year. He is a very big athletic guy, and uh, we're very excited about him. Marquise McLean is another big receiver, a guy that's you know six two, a little over two hundred pounds. He has a forty inch vertical, runs a four five. Came to camp uh, and really stood out to us. Uh, we we really feel good about him. Prince Sammons is a guy that uh, Coach Hand, uh, Herb Hand, was recruiting before at Penn State. Uh, he had made a visit here before as a defensive lineman. We really went hard the last month or so uh, at offensive tackle. He is a guy that a lot of people wanted as a defensive uh, end. And uh, that tells you his physicality. So we're very excited about him playing offensive tackle for us. Uh, we think the sky is the limit for this young man, and we're very excited uh, about him. Marlon Character. Uh, we really appreciate Marlon's loyalty uh, to us. Um, he stayed committed to us. Through the transition of us losing a defensive coordinator, um, you know, and our secondary coach, and those guys kept recruiting him, and uh, and he hung in there with us. He stayed with us. He waited until uh, we hired a defensive coordinator. We hired a secondary coach, and I really appreciate uh, his loyalty to us. He's going to be a fantastic player. He's got uh, got a very good skill set. Tayshawn Manning um, is a young man that was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, close to three months ago, um, you know, he is, uh, he is a guy that we're very excited about in the future. We really feel like it'll be a Sean Coleman story all over again. He's a tough young man. Uh, when, after he signed his papers, say, what are you going to do to celebrate? And uh, he went to go get chemo. And uh, so if you would keep uh, your thoughts and prayers uh, with him and his family. He's got a great attitude, and we truly believe that he'll be with us in a short period of time. Daniel Thomas, a defensive back. Uh, from Montgomery is a guy that has been on our radar a long time, and uh, we've known a lot about him. Uh, he has come over to games. Uh, you know, we brought him on an official visit this past weekend, just fell in love with him and his family. Uh, he is a football player, and so we're very excited to have Daniel in the secondary. Nate Craig uh, Myers is a guy, like I said earlier, we uh, identified him two years ago. We really felt like he was one of the best overall players in the entire country. He's a big guy. Um, you know, he can go get the football. He's tough to tackle. He's got that competitive edge. He's got a great family. He's a wonderful person. And uh, Coach Craig did a very good job uh, recruiting him. And uh, we're excited about him. He's got a chance to be an impact player for, for us. Javon Myers, a defensive back, uh, is a guy that's long. He's very athletic. Uh, Coach McGriff is very excited about this guy. We think he'll have a chance to come in and compete uh, for playing time. And, of course, lastly, Derek Brown. Uh, you know, the number one player in the state of Georgia. Uh, been recruiting him for, for two years, uh, probably a little over two years. Coach Garner did a wonderful job with him. Uh, he's got a wonderful family. Um, you know, he is he's a true impact player. You know, we believe he's one of the best players in the entire country. Got a chance to watch him in person play, and it was one of the more impressive performances that uh, I've got a chance to, to, to watch at any position. So. We're very excited about him overall. This is a very good class. Um, the thing that really stands out to me is it's very talented, but these are high character young men with great families. And so that's what we targeted. Uh, you heard me say a lot of times about we recruited this guy for two to three years, uh, developing those relationships over a long period of time. I think there's something really special that goes with that. And uh, so I'm very excited. And I know every year I've been here, I've got up before you and said how excited I am, which I was. But this class is a little bit different. I mean, this, this class is a, a special class. And it's probably from the standpoint that there is true impact players, impact positions. Defensive line sets the tone for defense. Receivers, you know, guys that can make plays, impact plays with that. So I'm real excited and uh, real proud of our staff. And uh, th this class, I think that uh, you know people will look back on in years to come. Questions for Coach Malzahn? Gus, as far as John Franklin goes, will he will he be 
give him a chance to win the job? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's going to get a chance to win the job. Um, I mean, our quarterback position is wide open. Uh, he came in here wanting a chance to, to win a job. Woody Baird will have a chance, too. I mean, we're going to see who the best guy is, and, and uh, we'll go from there. Josh, you guys signed a lot of big receivers this year. Yeah. What kind of prompted that change? Why did you want to go to Well, we just felt like you know, we lost Ricardo, we lost Melvin Ray. I mean, those are big guys. And we just felt like we needed to get some some big guys in this class. And so that was just something that uh, you know, Coach Lashley and Coach Craig and myself just really targeted. And the great thing is these guys, I mean, we started targeting them a year and a half to two years ago. And that's exactly who we went after. And we got each one of those guys we went after. and so. You know, I think that really says a lot. Second straight year that you made significant changes on coach staff on defense, and yet you've had two top ten classes. What's that say just about Auburn in general? Well, I mean, I, I think it says a lot because uh, that's hard to do. Uh, when you lose a defensive coordinator and you lose a secondary coach, and, you know, we lost three defensive uh, coaches. And uh, But it says a lot about the rest of our staff. Um, you know, like I said, with, with Coach Garner, I mean, holding that defensive class together until we were able to get Coach Steele and Coach McGriff, Coach Williams, and Coach Williams did a great job, too. I mean, he hit the ground running. Uh, he is going to be one of those bright up and coming guys. I'm very excited about Coach McGriff. Um, you know, talking about a great personality, a great person, and he's a ball coach. This is the most early and low leagues you had. Is that something you guys pushed uh, uh, to players and suggested? Yeah, you know, every every player is different, and each young man is different. But the early enrollees, it definitely helps you. And that's nine that we had, more than we've ever had. I, I think you see a trend around college football. More and more want to come in and go through spring and compete, have a chance to play early. So, uh, you know, we're excited about the nine guys. They're off to a very good start. Uh, they've worked out with Coach Russell. And, uh, you know, they're looking forward to spring practice. Did that benefit you in January with the other recruits being able to focus on other guys? Yeah, well, you know, anytime you've got nine guys out of the way and you can just focus on the rest, I think it definitely helps. You know, it takes a little bit of stress uh, off as far as that goes. With the wide receiver and defensive line classes in particular, Gus, how many of these guys do you view as potentially could make an impact immediately? Well, I mean, the way we're recruiting, I mean, we hope all of them have a chance. I mean, we're going to give all these guys an opportunity to help. Uh, they're very talented, like we talked about. And, uh, you know, we're going to play the best out there. You know, Coach Garner loves to play a lot of defensive linemen, which is great. Keep those guys fresh. Receiver-wise, you know, we have uh, very few guys on scholarship. We lost four seniors. So, you know, these guys coming in, you know, they'll have a chance to get in the mix right off of that. Jeff, can you talk, walk us through the process with Daniel Thomas? He said he got the offer early mm -hmm. this morning. And yeah. It's kind of a – Late yeah. The wire type of yeah, he's a guy that, that we've known about for a long time. Even the old defensive staff when we were here was uh, really on our radar. And uh, he's a true football player. And uh, so, you know, he came on an official visit this weekend. And um, we were very honest enough to talk with him. We just uh, decided to make the call. We made the call really, really early this morning. And, uh, you know, he was ready to go. And so he's got a wonderful family. I think they're very excited. And uh, he's a football player. And uh, so I'm excited. To, uh, to have him on our team. Yes, yeah, so you talked about the size. And in the second day, you got some guys that, that have some length yeah. that give you some, some options versatility-wise. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, Co Coach McGriff's r really looking for guys that have the, the length, the long arms that can run and, and all that. He feels very good about this secondary that he has uh, coming in. He thinks these guys will at least be in the mix to have a chance to play. <laughs> How has John Franklin III just reacted to when he first got on campus and trying to, you know, meld with the team? And what do you expect out of all the quarterbacks once you hit the practice field in the spring? Yeah, uh, first of all, you know, I think he's fit in very well. Um, you know, he's a very likable <coughs> young man. Um, i tell you the thing about our team is they're very welcoming. Um, you know, the guys that come in, they just embrace them. So I think he's very comfortable and, uh, and fitting in very well. As far as our quarterbacks are concerned, I mean, I'm really looking forward to spring. Uh, let those guys compete. Um, there's a lot of good options out there. And competition brings out the best in everybody. And so I, I think all those guys are ready to roll their sleeves up and, uh, and get ready to work. How hard is it to get four guys? Well, I guess that's in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, but get four guys that much to no work. Yeah, you know, the spring is good. I mean, I think the spring, that's exactly, you know, but once you get into fall, if you got four guys, that's not so good. You know, we did that 
uh, when Nick Marshall won the job, I guess in 2013, and I think we went about two weeks non-live, and then we felt like, hey, we had to put the ball down and go live, and it kind of cleared things up. But, um, you know, in the spring, I think that's good. I mean, we'll let these guys play, and I think it'll give us some good information before we get to fall camp. Is it possible you can name a starter after spring, or do you want to wait till you, you know, I, I, every year's different, and uh, we'll just see how spring goes. You know, uh, I think we named Cam Newton a starter, I think, two weeks after spring, and it may have been the last one. So. Gus Gallant and Andrew Wright, you talk about the possibilities of guys playing early. Tight ends a place that mm -hmm. you didn't have a catch out of that position last year. Talk about kind of what he brings to the table. Yeah, yeah. Landon uh, has got a chance to be a big time player, we think. He's a very physical guy. Uh, he can catch the football. He's got that tough mentality. You know, Jalen Harris is a guy, too, that we think is going to have a chance to be a heck of a player, too. So those two guys I'm really excited about to watch in spring. How much of an impact did Herb have, not only in this <coughs> recruitment, you know, the three weeks from the time he got the job, but also going forward, Gus, because obviously his role with you in Tulsa was yeah. very much a co-coordinator deal. You have Red, you have Damian. How many guys going to be involved in the office going forward? Yeah, you know, Herb, Herb, first of all, is a very, very good recruiter, has a great reputation, and uh, he's a very good teacher, too. And, uh, you know, it, he was he was very instrumental in Prince. He had a relationship already. We identified him about a month ago and recruited him hard, and Herb did a great job uh, with him. And I know he's excited to coach him. Good. And Broderius, I'll just say this, too. He did a good job developing a relationship in a short period of time with Broderius, too. And uh, I know he's looking forward to playing. With Cam Newton becoming like an international superstar now, do you find that it helps you guys recruiting all just the fact that he came here and everybody knows who he is? You know, it definitely helps. I mean, you know, Cam Newton, uh, you know, every quarterback wants to be the next Cam Newton, and, you know, he's, he's doing pretty good right now, so I'd say that definitely helps. Gus, has the era kind of changed in the sense that you're recruiting guys over a three year span now instead of a four? You're just yeah. kind of seeing that fourth year? I think that's very important, you know. Uh, you know, Auburn's a special place, and it is truly about family. And when we're able to recruit young men and their families for an extended period of time, we got a very good chance. And, you know, so you see this group, you get them to say two years, three years, and uh, so I think that's very important. How much have you been focusing on juniors for how long? And as you mentioned about this morning, how long were those phone calls, for example? How much time did you have your days, I'd say? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, we've been thinking about the juniors for a long period of time. I mean, it, you know, every year it seems like it gets more earlier and earlier. So, uh, you know, our staff's done a good job. Uh, today was uh, was a really good day. Uh, got me on the phone with close to 50, um, you know, guys coming up. And I, I think that's a great thing. I'm excited to coach those, I mean, or recruit those guys. I know our, our coaches are too. You mentioned losing those four receivers and bringing in the newcomers. You lost <laughs> four linebackers as well. Bring in one. Why so few linebackers in this, in this group? Yeah, we, you know, we, we, we've got some young linebackers we feel very good about already. And, uh, you know, Trey Threat right there, we think uh, uh, will fit in good too. So we feel good about the young guys that we redshirted or played on special teams. Take two more. Is there any one guy, you know, that we've all mentioned all the names, but one guy that you really like and maybe it's under the radar a little bit that doesn't get talked about? Yeah, I, I think uh, they just asked me that question. I mean, I, I said Eli Stove just off the top of my head. There's a lot of guys. I think that uh, Nick Cole is a guy that I think is going to be a phenomenal player that's probably a little under the radar. But, you know, Eli Stove is a guy that, you know, he's a top 100 receiver, you know, but he kind of – Gets a little bit overlooked with, with the other other guys, but he's a phenomenal player. We think he's going to have a chance to make an impact. We think he'll make an impact. Have you made decisions on your support staff of the uh, place Bentley and William and Kyle? N not yet. What I was wanting to do is get through this recruiting class, and I'll really focus on that uh, probably early next week. I'll have some more updates as far as that go goes. I'd like to try to do that um, soon once we get back. Gus, can you quickly talk about the transition of Prince to offensive line and how he feels about it and how you were able to kind of sell him on that? Yeah, uh, we just said, hey, Prince, we, we, we need we need offensive tackle. Uh, we feel like your skill set will fit uh, exactly what we're looking for. Would you be interested in doing that? And he said, hey, I'd be interested in doing anything. I just want to help a team. And so that's what we recruit him for. I know other teams recruit him at defensive end. You know, he's a very good defensive end too, but he's got that physical mentality. 
Uh, he's very athletic. I think he's close to 280 pounds. I mean, he's going to be bigger. And um, so we're very excited about playing him at tap on. We think the sky's the limit for him. Jimmy had a pretty good day today. How excited was he in the war room? And how many uh, outfits did he wear today? How many what? Outfits. How many wardrobe changes? But I saw, every time I saw him, he wore something different. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. I was tough to concentrate. He's got that GQ about him, you know. But uh, he uh, he did a good job. I mean, I'm 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 very very proud of him. The job he did with these receivers, and you know, he worked extremely hard to develop those relationships over a, over a long period of time. And I'll say this again. I mean, the guys we got is the guys we wanted two years ago. I mean, that's rare. Usually, you identify your top guys and. Then they kind of go, and you may get one of them, and then you got to go to the next guy. But those are the guys we wanted, and that's the exciting thing, you know, for me. But he did a great job, and, and our, our whole offensive staff did a good job. I mean, you know, we kind of team recruit, and uh, we family recruit. And, uh, very proud of our staff; they work extremely hard. Gus, with all the, with all the coaching changes, and they had to just come here and just jump right into recruiting. Is there some catching up to do as you start to get ready for spring practice? Uh, you know, we really focused on uh, recruiting, to, and we usually do it this time, but now we can transition into our players and uh, really get back to, you know, being around our players, getting ready for spring practice. Spring practice has moved up a little bit, and I think it's March 1st, so I'm excited <laughs> to get on the field with those guys early. So we'll kind of flip the switch and uh, really start focusing on, on spring, which is very exciting to me. Is there a particular reason for moving up spring? Uh, you know, the way the schedule fell is one reason, but I kind of like a little bit more time, you know, after spring ball as far as recruiting and everything goes with that. Hey, Gus, you've you had two, uh, the past two signing classes have had 100% qualifiers. Yeah. Uh, is that something you foresee happening for the first straight year? Y yes. Yeah, well, we, we feel pretty strong about that. The academic red shirt has come back into play this year. The academic red shirt. Are you familiar with the academic red shirt? Academic red shirt. This new thing with the NCAA. Yeah, you just talk about red shirt. Well, it's called an academic red shirt. Yeah, I, I feel like all our guys you, are, that you use. Yeah, I, I think all our guys are qualified. Okay. All right, coach. Thank okay. you. I'm gonna be